Epic Photogasm, an interesting name for a realistic style checkpoint which promises fantastic results on a highly tuned model, knowledgeable on what a photo is, while having a high degree of customization when specifying factors like ethnicity and age. I want to see what this checkpoint can do and share the results with you, the audience, so you can decide whether you want to give this one a try for your own work. But hit the like button, be sure to subscribe, and let me give it to you bite-sized. Epic Photogasm was created by Epinikion, who is also the creator of the Epic Realism checkpoint. And looking at the example images, we get a range of photographs containing both people, objects, and animals to varying degrees of quality. The description highlights that the model can do a variety of ethnicities and ages quite well, and you can even do more fantasy style images, which I'll be keen to see as this model is focused on realism. The author recommends that we use simple prompts without fake enhancers like masterpiece, photorealism, 4K, and other words which try to describe the level of quality or detail, but we can use prompts to describe the atmosphere like cinematic, dark, and moody. It's recommended that we don't use a ton of negative embeddings, and we don't need any extra noise offset, which is the additional noise that is added to an image and then clarified through sampling steps to reach the final image. The suggested sampling step is 20 to start, and the author has also provided some additional style negatives and extensions. But with that, let's dive into running some tests and seeing what this checkpoint can do in action. So to start, I replicated the example image to ensure that everything was working, and we received the exact same image to the quality and likeness we expected. And everything in the image looks great, from the overall composition to the eyes, mouth and hair, with nothing standing out as odd or technically wrong. Out of curiosity, I wanted to see if there would be any difference to this example image when using those unnecessary enhancers like photorealistic, and as promised, there's no difference across our prompts so worth leaving it out. Next, I wanted to try a variety of settings on my own custom image, and my own portrait turned out well, with the teeth looking especially fantastic, but the eyes began losing some of their accuracy as our camera was further away from the face, so this would need to be fixed with After Detailer. The first test I wanted to run was on the sampling steps, which is the number of steps we allow the image to transition from a noisy mess to the clear final piece. They recommended a starting value of 20, so I figured I'd test between 10 and 50 to see if we get any significant quality increases or losses. I noticed hardly any quality increases or decreases from changing the sampling steps, even when lowering the value to 10. Looking at the difference between 10 sampling steps and 50, while there are some differences, it's hard to tell what they are. And since I'm struggling to tell the difference, I'd say use whatever sampling step your computer can afford, going higher if your PC can handle it. Then looking at the samplers, which is the algorithm used to clarify the image with the sampling steps, I tested DPM++2M Keras, SDE Keras, Eula A, and DDIM, as these tend to be popular options, including the default used by the checkpoint. And despite the results being pretty good across our images, there are some differences which should be noted. DPM++2M and SDE Keras provide the best results, with 2M Keras leading in terms of accuracy, detail, and clarity. The weaker option is definitely Eula A, where the background is blurry, the face is a lot smoother, and we have this belt which wasn't prompted. DDIM is also a good choice, with minimal differences to the DPM samplers. I think my choice would be either DPM option, but it does look like you will get decent results, regardless of which one you use. Next on the CFG scale, which determines how closely the resulting image should adhere to the prompt, I tested the values between 4 to 9, with 5 and 6 being popular within the example images. The image looks fine across CFG scales, but there was a slight increase in the saturation and contrast at a higher scale, although nothing to be concerned about. Lastly, looking at the clip skip, which determines how literally our prompt should be interpreted in the final image, I tested 1 to 4, and the first two provided the best results, being the most accurate to my prompt. 3 and 4 were far less accurate, but there weren't any significant quality losses from using a higher clip skip, so this is more of a question of how much freedom Stable Diffusion has to interpret our prompt. Next, I wanted to try a range of skin colours to see whether it can handle tones from light to dark, and of course our usual purple. And to my surprise, 
this checkpoint handles skin tones brilliantly. There's a distinct tonal shift from pale to white, olive to tanned, and black being the darkest I was able to achieve. To no one's surprise, purple didn't work, as this checkpoint was trained on photographs, so we won't be getting any widow makers with this checkpoint. And regardless of our skin tone, it didn't modify the clothing, jeans, or any other aspects of our image, such as the lighting, so I'm quite impressed with the results we got. The checkpoint also said that it's good at recognizing a variety of races, so I decided to test the same ones using their example image to see what kind of results we can get. They use quite a few, so you may need to squint your eyes, but putting them up on screen, the results are what I expected, where we're getting the distinction between the different ethnic groups, but it can be tricky to tell how big the distinction is between similar ethnic groups. I think stable diffusion tends to generalize locations when rendering the subjects, so this does work in the general sense of getting a woman from a generalized part of the world, but will probably struggle when specifying countries that are local, but have a shared aesthetic. Moving on to age, we were able to get a good variety of ages, although some of the prompts I copied from the example were somewhat redundant, such as young, mid-20, which yielded very similar results. But other results like middle-aged, aged and old were a bit more distinct, so if you like cookies and home ownership, this checkpoint has you covered. I'm curious to also see whether this checkpoint can do different styles, or at least give us some kind of variety in the kind of images we can generate. The example images were aiming for realism, but also included some stylized pieces. And unsurprisingly, we didn't get a variety of styles from the checkpoint, even when using a heavy weighting. There were some changes to the image, but there were more errors in anatomy or changes in the background, rather than style changes. So if you're looking for anything other than realistic, this may not be the checkpoint to use. In regard to objects, this checkpoint can do a range of them without people, which means you can get exactly what you prompted to varying degrees. For example, in these examples, the candle and bike are pretty good, alongside the cake looking both convincing and delicious. But things do fall apart a bit with the toilet roll and coffee, where the checkpoint seems to try and include multiple objects in one composition, including the multiple bog rolls and multiple handles on the coffee cups. But otherwise, I'm impressed with the results and I think with some tweaking, you can achieve very good results for generating objects alone within a scene. I ran a test on a variety of animals so we could see how this checkpoint handles non-human living creatures and the results do vary greatly. The sheep, tiger and eagle gave pretty good results but things fall apart with the worm. Unless this is some new species of worm I've never seen or perhaps the tapeworm, it didn't seem to understand what I was aiming for in this instance such as a regular earthworm. The dragon also came out in different styles so perhaps you're better off sticking to real world creatures rather well, than mythological ones. Lastly, I ran a final test on some environment landscapes, such as a hotel, a train station, and a lake, using three different seeds, and these turned out fantastic. For some reason, the train station turned out grey, which is strange, but the hotel looks sophisticated and detailed, while the lake looks amazing, calm, and I can't see anything out of place. But hopefully you found this overview helpful, and if you did, then drop a like on the video, subscribe, and check out the Patreon for image files from all of my videos. This is Bite Size Genius, and I hope you enjoyed.